good evening all of you i am uh, cp ansel working as a technology manager with uh, hnr block india private limited headquarter in kansas city missouri state and uh, we welcome you for the the session on finops in azure cloud just a few few minutes i'll i'll take you through uh, our organization, uh, the background of the organization, and then uh, we will move on to the, uh, the session, okay? So uh, HNR Blog was founded in 1955 by uh, two brothers having a single vision, right? And at the time when uh, taxpayers were left to navigate or left with the complexity of filing their own taxes, Henry and Richard Blodge started offering the tax prep guidance. And this innovative service marked the beginning of the tax preparation industry and setting the foundation of our company values, which is like putting the people first, understanding their requirements, and then supporting them. Now, as we move along, we improved our, we, we, we grown and shown our global presence. You know, we have offices in US as as, as I mentioned, we started in 1955 in the US itself, and then we expanded our operations to Canada, Australia, we have offices in India, Ireland, and uh, franchise locations spread across multiple countries like UK, Germany, Japan, and uh, obviously in Korea and Italy as well. And we have, uh, when we talk about the India office, we have, we, we, we support two service channels. One is the uh, the business side of it and the business office was started in 2012 uh, and uh, this is located in Hyderabad and the, the to support the technology part of it now we we started a global technology center in 2017 uh, in Trivandrum uh, in our techno park and currently we have three facilities in techno park uh, having a headcount of thousand plus as of now moving on so uh, Definitely, you know, we are a great place to, sorry, oops, slide. Sorry. Okay, so we are a great place to work certified organization and having uh, certified for the last three consecutive years in different categories and uh, being in the, the top 10 of the best place to work for women associates in India and featuring in the top 25 best IT places in working work, IT workplaces in India uh, in this year as well. So, and this is definitely the testimony of our exceptional people first culture and uh, the experience we give to our people. And I'm definitely proud to be part of one of the best workplaces in India. Okay, now let's, let's talk about the uh, session right now. So it gives me even pleasure to welcome you all to the session which is organized by Kerala IT Parks, which is a Government of Kerala initiative that provides quality infrastructure space at various strategic locations spread across the state. Thank you, Kerala IT Park, for giving us this opportunity to share our learnings with a broader audience. Along with me, we have Shamsha Shipale, Associate Architect, Cloud Technology. He's a seasoned professional with experience over a decade on multiple domains in IT industry. And uh, he will definitely take us through the various challenges uh, we face in the public uh, cloud cost management, the different operating models and uh, about the cloud FinOps and different operating models of cloud FinOps and our learnings based on the implementations or the, 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 the implementations we have done within our organization. And over the course of this session, we will try to break some of the myths about FinOps, you know, uh, people often say that it is a buzzword and uh, it, it is just for cost saving or uh, it is just the FinOps team is responsible for uh, en enabling FinOps. And sometimes people say that, okay, FinOps team definitely you know, stifles the innovation or some people say that it is just another form of data analysis. So we just we will just try to break that myth during the course of this session. And I hope all of you can find something tangibly useful from this session and understand the approach on the cloud financial management. Uh, and uh, obviously, you know, while the session is on, uh, please feel free to shoot your questions uh, through chat. 
uh, we will definitely have it addressed during the Q&A session. Now, uh, another point is, you know, people might be thinking, you know, why we have we have a lot of uh, new things or a new technology like like uh, metaverse and all in uh, coming up. So, why we have why did we choose FinOps? Uh, definitely, you know, there is definite reason for it, right? So, we understood the benefit of having FinOps as a discipline, as a practice in our organization. Uh, you won't believe with FinOps practice, uh, we were able to reduce our monthly spend, our cloud spend from 1.7 million to 1.4 million. Uh, this is as per the data we, we took a uh, couple of months back, that's September 2022. And we definitely want all the entrepreneurs, the managers or the stakeholders, the architects, the leads, the cloud engineers, the software engineers to understand the benefit of FinOps practice and the value it provides. So. Over to you, Shah. Thank you, Sibi. Uh, let me share my screen. So, Sibi, uh, today we are talking about uh, various areas in cloud FinOps. So, in the agenda, we start with challenges of public cloud cost management. Then we came to what is FinOps and what are the goals of FinOps. What is the best practices of FinOps in your organization and different operating models in FinOps. And we end up the session with the innovative ideas that we implemented in HNR block for various cost optimization methodologies. So first of all, we start with a question. Uh, you can think this, think about this question. Is it relevant for your organization? The question is. Are you focusing on cloud-based as much as you do on cloud investments? So this is a problem statement and we are trying to give the solution for this question on the end of session. So without further ado, we are moving into the first agenda that is challenges of public cloud cost management. So we all know that in the traditional method, so uh, again I uh, I missed that slide once again I am showing the slide again the question is are you focusing on cloud based as much as you do on cloud investment so we will trying to cover the solution for this question on the entire uh, session. And moving on to the challenges of current public cloud cost management. We all know that in the traditional on-prem servers, there is no decentralized cost happening in the traditional on-prem servers. That means we are purchasing the server. There is a procurement team already there. So they will manage all the purchase and billing part. And that will be a static cost there won't be any dynamic cost in between happening in the traditional model. But when we are all moving into the cloud part, cloud is always known for elasticity and it spend also going in dynamic way. So different application teams are purchasing the resources without informing to the finance team so that the cost will be in a decentralized method. And the wastage of cost due to our provision is almost 30 to 50 percentage in every year. And the most challenging part is the FinOps financial team as well as the cloud engineering team are need to be working cross-functional team, but uh, they don't understand their language each other. FinOps finance team will not will be difficult to understand the engineering terms and engineering team will be difficult to understand the finance area. So we need to fill the gap with cloud FinOps. So there are many myths, as CB mentioned, there are many myths. When we start a cloud FinOps team in HNR Block, the initial stages, we had many myths, like it's a single team or it's a tool that can able to save the cost. But uh, uh, later on, we found that uh, it's, not a dependency for a single team. It's the whole organization need to be there for enabling finance in your organization. 
so it's a cultural discipline and everyone in the company or in everyone in the organization should be responsible for making your cost saving efforts so as a definition finops is an evolving cloud financial management discipline and cultural practice that enable organization to get maximum business value by helping engineering finance and business team to collaborate on data driven decisions or uh, spending decisions so in a nutshell we can able to say that devops is a combination of developers and the operational team and finance is the combination of that devops team plus finance team and this collaboration will can able to achieve the cost balance quality in order to gain cost efficiency and that saved cost can be able to use for reinvesting in future funding so this is a simple definition about finops we will get into more in the coming slides so basically finops is like devops it follows most of the devops culture and it having a feedback as well as iterating methodology so finops have three phases first is inform phase uh, we can compare it or we can uh, the similar method is data analysis think about data analysis uh, whatever we gather the information we analyze in the inform session and uh, understand the cloud cost bills and from the inform session we will move to optimize session optimize phase where we will set the goals for the bills as well as create multiple strategies to optimize the cost uh, in optimize phase and the third and uh, last phase is operate phase where whatever we earn or gain from inform and optimize stage we will execute it that in the operate phase so we will we will see each session and uh, we will uh, see many ideas from each phases in cloud finance model so coming into our uh, best practices and implementation as well as innovation ideas that uh, that implemented in hna block we would like to share that thoughts as well as ideas to the entire community uh, it might be uh, most of the companies or most of the organization might be already adopted uh, these techniques but uh, even though it will be help helpful for the startup and other organizations so in the inform session uh, basically we are collecting information understanding the cloud bills so most important thing is we need to visualize the data the data need to be most understandable form so that we can take a decision so we created first we created a management information system for cloud for identifying various specialized things that can able to make a decision from the top management so we use power bi reports for various cloud management information systems that can give a message or that can e easily understand analyze that where the cost where the spending is happened and can able to identify which resource is spending more and we can e easily identify um, we can easily take decisions from uh, cloud management and the second point uh, scorecard about scorecard uh, we categorize the application in tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 or multiple tiers and each tier will have each tier will assign with a scorecard so the budget is also limited respective to the scorecard scorecard that means tier 1 application will have a budget more than tier 2 applications so thus we can able to control the cost by assigning budget to the multiple applications and budget forecasting so forecasting is for forecasting the budget from the data we taken from one or two days of consumption of the cost in cloud so that we done through an automation uh, we forecast the cost uh, that means we predict the uh, cost in the 30th day or the last day of the month from the spending from the first or second day um, 
then uh, we regularly uh, we regularly monitor and rearchitecture uh, the application as well as uh, we work on reducing cost how we can able to reduce the cost through uh, rearchitecturing or implementing new methodologies code optimization we we normally architecturing the best practices for uh, reducing the cost in um, architecture itself initial architecture itself and on previous technical previews we um, we normally identify the new releases from the cloud provider say an example asv3 was one of the latest release from microsoft as a general preview general available and it was previously previous state we done all the researches on previous state and identified that it is more cost efficient than the previous version that is asv2 so uh, we implemented that in the new releases or new applications whatever in the hrm block and visualization on budget versus consumption report the sixth point uh, the sixth idea that means all the managers or top leaders can able to identify or can understand their current budget as well as how much they consumed from a power bi report or a visualization data dashboard so that they can identify the current spending and able to control the cost or and able to control the consumption from that budget versus consumption report and it make more easier to uh, easier for managers and top leaders to control their cost or identify their uh, areas of improvement in the cost or budgeting seventh point in the inform session uh, in the architecture itself we always enable right sizes of resources that means if i only need a uh, two core vm two core uh, virtual machine i only go for that uh, and if it only i need four core vm or i need more utilization then i resize for that and uh, i make it four core and till then my cost the, the cloud provider i only need to pay two core vm cost to the cloud provider thus we can able to save the cost and lastly we we identified the resource utilizations and we will send this report resource utilization report to the application team so that uh, they can able to identify uh, what are the underutilized resource in their project and uh, able to act on that if they want to resize it they want to terminate it and uh, those decision can be able to taken from the resource utilization report these are few recommended few innovation ideas that we uh, done in the inform phase moving to optimize uh, we took many strategies we set many goals for uh, controlling the cost so first of all we we took infrastructure as a model infrastructure as a cord model that means uh, we we, uh, we take terraform as a infrastructure as a cord and we define the terraform with respect to the best practices available in the industries and through the terraform we standardize the on body processes and policies so that wastage can be able to minimize through terraform scripting and and we also enable the sharing sharing uh, sharing of resources say an example um, we have log analytics or build a service which are which is no need for all the applications that means all no need for a dedicated applications we can centralize those resources or we can share those resources and multiple application can able to take benefit from that or can use those resources in a sharing model thus we can able to control the cost enabling hybrid benefit is one another uh, option in mo most of the cloud providers so uh, the hybrid benefits in azure cloud enables you 30% cost saving on vms on especially on licensing part on vm as well as sql servers and reservation is another benefit from uh, the cloud provider um, that means if my application is not seasonal if my app i one day i want 
a server or on some uh, resource type which need to be run longer time that means one year or three year i can able to reserve those instances and can save up to 72 percentage of that normal cost of that resources so reservation is a, one of the best option for all of the organizations and you need to talk uh, or we need to uh, work with the cloud partner to enable the reservation backup and retention policy is another option where we can back up the server back up the storages and uh, in national blog we have multiple backup policies available like uh, for production and non prod it is separate configuration for production we make uh, more retention days uh, but in lower environment like development qa or lnp we are going with a, a, a lower uh, retention days in production it goes with a higher and um, uh, lower environments it goes with a normal or below seven days policy assignment uh, we have a well defined policy assignments on test and sandbox environments where uh, there is a control on it, deploying the premium resources accident deployment of premium resources in the lower environment if it is needed we exclude that but normally it is not allowed in the lower environment and unused resource alerting is uh, another option that uh, we alert all the unused or idle resources running more than x days x number of days normally it will be 14 days in uh, in our our case so these are a uh, few other strategies we took in the optimized phase Coming to operate phase, where uh, this is the area where we implement whatever we taken from info as well as um, optimize phase. So all the strategy, all the analysis, where get executed in this operate phase. So first, mo most of these ideas are we converted into automation. So first automation or first innovation idea is orphan resource termination. That is, we create many resources, especially on VMs, we create only VM, but there are dependent resources are there, but we never thought about or never thought the cost about those dependent resources. We deploy VM and we delete whenever it needed, but that dependent resource will not get deleted even after you delete the VM. So we create automations for identifying the unattached dependent resources and delete if it is not attached to the parent resources. And second automation idea or innovation idea is VM snoozing, that uh, we have a scheduled snoozing, we have a custom built scheduled snoozing available in the, uh, available in HNR block. And uh, this enable you to start and stop your VM if it is not using or in a scheduled basis, it will get start and stop. And next idea is on database export and import. So we have almost 400 plus applications in cloud. And uh, some of the application, 100 plus applications are seasonal basis and with lower priority applications. Though those applications, the lower environment databases are migrated to or export to a storage account with lesser cost. And whenever the development needed, then only it might be the development might be seasonal or one month or two months. If it is ideal, then we will export to the storage account and import back whenever the development starts. Thus the database cost will be zero for the entire month or entire season. So that's also we made into different uh, using automation. We uh, we made it happen and a uh, couple of seasonal based application running with zero cost in databases. And we do regular cleanup of uh, unnecessary uh, resources in cloud that we collaborate with the application team and other teams to identify the resources are 
needed in their project so coming to sonal redundancy uh, sonal redundancy is one option enabled or on option uh, we are getting from the cloud provider but uh, in the lower environment normally we are not enabling sonal redundancy it's basically for a high availability of your system in higher environment or production we enable sonal redundancy for tier 1 applications and the next point is spin up of lower environments whenever it needed like uh, it's i'm not recommending for tier 1 applications but uh, if you have load and performance testing or some other lower environments for your application then it's only needed whenever a load and performance testing happen so we can create the terraform code or we can using the help of any infrastructure as a code we can able to spin up the resources whenever we need it and delete the end resource using the same infrastructure as a code and uh, we can keep the lnp or we keep the lower environment with zero cost whenever it need it we can spin up spin it up and next one is automate scale down and scale up in lower environment on weekends so normally in weekends we will not have that much traffic and most of the resources are sitting idle and with low low traffic so in the in those case say an example if one of my uh, as having 10 instances with uh, auto scaling or manual scaling then we have automations written for manually scaling or, or automatically scaling down to one as well as whenever the week start or in the monday every monday it will uh, increase to 10 instances uh, automatically so we have uh, that we, we have that idea into automation and last but not least uh, expiry resource termination is one other uh, resource, uh, idea or automation um, that we implemented uh, for especially for vms that are idle running for more than x days that means in a testing environment a vm somebody created a vm and uh, it's idle or they they completed their r and d or completed their testing after that the resource will be idle for a long time but every hour it it consuming cost so in that case we identified the uh, performance of the system like uh, identify the utilization of the system uh, we uh, gone through the events happening in the system and with different condition we will analyze that the system is idle then that system will get terminated through automatic fashion hope uh, we uh, we gone through many innovative or innovative ideas on automations in case of finops that we can use in the cloud so we may majorly discussing the azure but the same can able to implement in all the cloud providers the name change instead of vm uh, in azure there will be ec2 instance in aws and google engine will be or google app engine will be there in the google so the name will change but uh, you can implement these ideas in your organization and as a summary uh, um, hope you get understand about what is finops what is how we can able to implement those things from these examples in inform optimize and operate phases so it's all about a collaboration of different teams inside the organization it's not only a single team that control the finops so all all the members in the uh, in the organization should have an awareness about uh, cloud finops when they are deploying a resource they should aware about is it necessary or it more over provision they need to verify all this all those things and this is not only for cost optimization it enable you through the practices and how we can able to use the resources in a better manner and thus from all these optimization we can use finops for enabling the future funding
uh, hope you get a good understanding about cloud finops and uh, open for questions okay thanks uh, okay thanks sham uh, for detailing about the the different phases of uh, Cloud FinOps or the financial cost man financial management of the cloud uh, cost. So, and uh, I'm sure that uh, you you definitely mentioned about the importance of having the inform phase, which is actually very critical for uh, getting to understand that okay, how our organization or the organization's cloud spend is, you know, how it is. Uh, how the data, how the resource utilization is, you know, how the different resources are being provisioned, right? And whether it is actually needed or not. You know, those those things are very important for us to plan the strategies and then execute it. And then for execution, we have a different, you mentioned about the different tools which needs to be created. Obviously, the, the tools, we have tools available in the market, uh, which is provided by the cloud, uh, which is shared by the, or given by the cloud providers, but uh, when you talk about the cost of the license or the the tool which we need to procure, uh, it's, it's it's huge. You know, you have to put a lot of uh, money on that particular tool. So uh, the effort the FinOps team needs to do is to you know continue to uh, look for areas where you can you know identify. First is identification. Second is strategizing it, and then third is you know how to ensure that we are able to execute those, right? So I think uh, we have we a have couple of questions coming in. Uh, so we, I also would like to share one success story, uh, which is published in uh, Microsoft customer stories uh, in last year. So, this is all about uh, mentioning, Microsoft is mentioning about a couple of automations and ideas that we implemented in the FinOps area and uh, able to save almost 30% of cost saving from the current cloud running cost. And we would like to enroll all the other organization by enabling um, your FinOps strategies uh, so that you can also write your success stories in the Microsoft or AWS platform. Okay, so uh, we have, we are getting some questions. So I'll, I'll start putting this through. Uh, one of the question is that, you know, we talked about reservation. So is reservation an option for seasonal use uh, during scaling up and scaling down during predicted high usage? So yeah. I, I believe the question is that uh, whether uh, reservation can be used uh, considering the, or used for a, or during a season or a peak period, right? Is what the question is. Hey. So uh, normally the reservation uh, uh, is focusing on a long term uh, reservation of resources. That is minimal is one year. Uh, we need to have reserved that instance for, we can reserve instance or for the all, all subscription, we can able to reserve, but minimum term is one year. And we also have option to uh, reserve that resource for three year also in, in terms of Azure Cloud. Okay. Thanks, Sham. Uh, okay. Uh, we talked about the tools, right? So, is there a uh, the question is Is there any single product available for Cloud FinOps? I believe it is all about the tools which is needed for operate as phase. So, so as like uh, DevOps uh, or Azure DevOps, you might uh, familiar about Azure DevOps. It, it is just a single tool which integrated many areas of DevOps methodology, but uh, we do not have a tool. Uh, till now, we do not have a tool for FinOps, single tool. The active is available, but uh, it is not covering all the areas of FinOps. There are multiple cloud cost management systems are there, but uh, 
entire cloud finance covering entire cloud finance is difficult and uh, till now there is no single tools available in the market okay thanks sham uh, we have a couple more questions in the the section uh, next question is how will you forecast the budget for a new project in azure So, uh, so all the cloud providers, there will be a forecasting cost forecasting options are available through some pricing calculators. So this is a form for Azure pricing calculator where you can select the resources like uh, I am a manager and uh, suppose I am a manager and I need to on a, onboard a project with one virtual machine and one SQL server uh, with one storage account. So I can select these resources and select all the specification available in the, in the calculator. And we can, if we are going with the reservation here, you can able to mention three year or one year reservation. So you can able to see how much discount you will get for reservation and it can enable hybrid benefit. If, if you are enabling hybrid benefit, your $67 will get to zero. And you can get a summary of all the cost and you can see the upfront cost, estimated monthly cost, average estimated monthly cost from this Azure pricing calculator. This is a better tool you can use for forecasting your application budget. And the same tools are available, same kind of tools are available in Aerobase and uh, Google. You can make use of that. Okay. Thanks, Sham. So hope uh, this is answered. The question is answered. Uh, yeah, a few more questions had come in. Okay. Uh, the next is, can we implement the FinOps model in a running project, which the project is already live? Yes. Sure. And uh, we can right size the resources. Right -size like we can, analyze, uh, we can analyze the utilization of current projects. Like I have a four core VM, but it is only utilizing two core. Then uh, I can able to resize to two core from four core to two core. So that was, uh, we can able to reduce the cost. And other best practices also we can able to implement without affecting the performance and without affecting the system, production system. We can able to do that. But better we are doing to do that in the initial stages of the, or whenever you are thinking about the uh, architecture diagram uh, at that, or writing the architecture di diagram, the initial stage itself, we need to think about the cloud finance or cost optimization areas. Okay, thank you, Sham. Hope that answered. Uh, the next question, uh, it's again an anonymous question. Uh, the question is, what are the areas where we need to look for uh, optimizing the cost? I think we already touched upon it, but then uh, probably we can again uh, re reinstate what are the main architectural areas uh, we need to look in order to optimize the cost. So uh, majorly uh, the utilization. So right sizing of resource is an important role, plays an important role in uh, FinOps. So whatever you needed, only deploy that. And uh, Wherever you can do automation, do automate, please do automate on that area so that uh, these are the major areas that we can look into the uh, initial stage of architecture. Right sizing is the main. Okay. One last question posted is. Uh... Can uh, you know we talked about innovations and the tools and uh, other things, right? Uh, which is needed for uh, cloud finops. So, uh, 
I'm not sure whether I understood this question clearly. It is the saying, uh, does automation enable cloud FinOps? So probably I believe this can be tied to the question that, okay, whether automation, whether the, the FinOps team stifles the innovation, right? So probably is it, probably that that is what the question is all about. So uh, automation is a part of FinOps, uh, but uh, FinOps is also deals with other other areas like uh, cultural and collaborate and making a uh, disciplinary action in the entire uh, organization. So we can do multiple innovations. We can convert that uh, innovation ideas to automation, but uh, uh, Cloud FinOps is uh, also deals with multiple areas, multiple other areas and making best practices uh, in the cloud and uh, disciplinary in deployments in cloud also include in the cloud finance. Okay, I'm, I'm again looking for a more questions. Uh, as of now I'm, okay. Yeah, one of the question is, we talked about a lot of optimizations, you know, you talked about resource, uh, understanding the resource and reducing it or, uh, uh, you know, making changes, reservations and stuff like that in, you know, as part of the operate phase, right? So how do these optimization, the question is, how do these optimization affect the performance of an application? Good question. So, uh... Our nor normal organization goal is to, or uh, the goal of a IT team uh, is to make their application or website live and uh, with most efficient. Uh, so uh, when we are thinking about a $10 million business, we will never think about a $10 savings. So whenever you implement a FinOps strategy, then uh, try to make sure that the performance is not compromised for your system. But if you're over, over provisioned, then try to reduce without affecting your performance or efficiency of the system. It's a great question. Thank you. Uh, the next question uh, is that, what are the rules required for main stakeholders uh, to improve Implement FinOps within an organization. Uh, it actually uh, start from the top CEO. Uh, CEO can start uh, this implementation or guide the top leaders and managers for uh, and the entire organization for doing the uh, optimized method method of deployment resources in cloud not only cloud in, in any IT areas, IT deployments. So all the members, all the all the organizational members are included in the FinOps. So basically what you're saying is it's a top-down uh, approach uh, wherein uh, the vision should be from the top level wherein where we have to optimize the cost and then see how we can improve, right? And how we can reinvest that fund uh, for the future. It's a cultural practice we need to enable in the in every organization. Organization. Okay, thank you. I hope uh, question. I hope uh, that answered you. And I have a question from Balakrishnan. Uh, the question is, is what is the basis that we can estimate the average cost of a cloud project? It depends on the resource, what you are deploying for your application. Uh, it will vary with respect to the cloud provider, as well as uh, it mainly depends on the resources and their tier, which tier you are using. That means premium standard or multiple SKUs are available. Which SKU or which tier you are using for that resource, that matters your cost. That means we can deploy it DB with uh, $3 per month as well as $1,000 per month. It depends on the 
skew what we are selecting. Okay, so what he is referring to is you understand your requirement and then based on that you uh, provision your resource, uh, provision your resources, right? And right. then when you are using the calculator, you use the minimum to start with and then expand on it. Yeah, try it with the if if your requirement. Uh, expect in or whatever requirement you need uh, are expected in development configuration, then try to implement it in the in other environment. If if it is not meeting, then try to expand the skew size. Thanks, Sham. Balakrishnan, uh, did that answer your question? Or do you have? Yes, I guess he is happy with it. Okay, so now we have a question from Agnes, and uh, the question is, in what things a budgeting system automation must concentrate the most, and for budgeting, how the cost spent can be collected? Okay. Um, so there are multiple APs provided by the cloud providers. For in the case of cost management, we can utilize those APIs to, un, to collect the cost information for our resources, and we can feed this to a visualization tool like Power BI. Thus, we can able to understand the all picture about the cost um, spend on your environment. Uh, Agnes, did that answer your question? Uh, you can message it on the chat if you're good. Okay, while we wait for Agnes to respond, uh, the next question is, uh, do we get any support from Microsoft team to analyze the utilization? Okay, before we go for that, Agnes requires a more elaborate answer. So that means, you know, probably you'll have to explain about, you know, how uh, when you are uh, looking into what, what should we concentrate more uh, from a budgeting perspective and also how the cost spend, the, 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 the spend can be collected. So probably we'll have to talk about more on the, uh, the utilization and then then how the, the cost is calculated after the, uh, the when, when the spent is being analyzed. So uh, answering to Agnes question, uh, we can, first of all, we can set a budget for you, all of your applications and uh, identify the APIs from Microsoft or uh, other cloud providers and uh, uh, we can compare the consumption versus budget through visualization. As well as we can send alerts if uh, if the budget or if the consumption is exceeded a threshold value of your assigned budget. That is also can be able to automate. There are multiple ideas we can automate uh, from budget versus consumption. These are the these are the two ideas which uh, I can point out now. And uh, you can also tie it with the utilization versus your resource uh, consumption. And uh, that is also can be able to make as an automation idea. I hope that clarifies. Uh, there's a question from Shiva Shankar. Uh, it's, it's, uh, he is asking that generally in live projects, the organization does the cost cutting already, right? Then how FinOps practices differ from the normal DevOps culture? Um, in normal DevOps culture, the, the definition itself, I said, it's a collaboration of multiple teams, especially the finance as well as the DevOps team. So we already have DevOps. So finance also need to include in the DevOps practices to identify their idea strategies that can able to implement in the cloud cost. So it differs from DevOps and FinOps.
uh, Shiva, I hope uh, that clarifies you. We have uh, five more minutes, so we'll take probably one more question. I think there was a question about, uh, think, uh, do we get any support from Microsoft to analyze the utilization? So the metrics of utilization metrics are directly available from the Azure portal or any other cloud provider portal. And we can understand uh, the basic parameters like CPU, memory, or traffic, uh, or input out output operations. All these metrics can be able to directly analyze from the Azure Blade itself, Azure uh, Alerts and Metrics Blade itself for all the resources. Uh, along with that, we can analyze it from custom KQL queries. If we pass, if we are passing that information to the log analytics, we can able to collect a visualization metrics from uh, log analytics queries. And if we are not getting proper or if we have confusions in the utilization, obviously we can able to contact the cloud provider. That means we can able to, in this case, we can able to contact Microsoft for better uh, utilization reports. Thank you. In short, uh, what uh, we have done is, you know, we have used the native solutions available to Microsoft and then using the KQL queries, we have extracted the data and then put it in a presentable format in Power BI or different other putting mechanisms so that we can understand and uh, understand the data better, okay, so right? Okay, so, so it's... So it is not, I mean, yes, Microsoft team does provide certain input functionalities within Azure portal, but then uh, it's always, it's up to our comfort, right? You know, whether we wanted to uh, use that and then or use more uh, uh, the, or use the the functionalities available that and then extract the data and present it in a, the way you wanted it to, wanted the, our your stakeholders or your management team to see, right? So. Uh, it's all about, uh, you know, presenting the data and collecting the data in an efficient manner. I hope that answers as well. So now we have a couple more minutes and I think uh, that uh, it will be difficult. I think one, one question ping one to me question. that uh, what are the resources considered for share? So, uh, so all the resources that cannot be able to uh, split other than those resources we can share all the resources that means uh, say example log analytics we can share for multiple applications build pool in a devops uh, uh, we can able to create multiple uh, we can create uh, we can use the same build pool for multiple applications and uh, service bus is another example we can create only single service based with uh, multiple queues and topics for different applications. So it depends on your architecture design. Uh, if, you're, uh, if your application demands are for a shared architecture, then you can implement multiple resources in cloud or you can use multiple resources in cloud for uh, shared hub and spark model. Okay. Great. I think that uh, I think we covered all the, the questions. Uh, yeah, one more question is there. We have only one more minute. You wanted to quickly take that, uh, uh, Sham? It's like, how will you assign the scorecard to prioritize your applications? So quickly, one minute. Uh, that depends on the business criticality. If uh, an application is more critical and if it is, uh, if it is uh, earning money for the organization, then the then it will come under tier one. And according to this category, we are uh, implementing the scorecard, and that scorecard also limit the budget. Okay, I think we were able to cover all the questions which came through. So. Uh, thanks, Sham, uh, for this wonderful session, and I hope uh, all the attendees have been benefited from this. And if you have any more questions, uh, you can reach out to us. Uh, you know, I will we'll put in our uh, email address on the chat. Uh, thank you once again, Carol IT Park, for organizing this session and giving us an opportunity to share our learnings. Uh,
Have a great evening. Bye.